Hi, this is Tim with After Later Audio, and today we're going to talk about the Ornament and Crime Eurorack module. Uh, there are two different firmwares. There is the original firmware and then something called Hemispheres. And the point of today's video is to go over the difference and what kind of apps are in each one. The original was uh, created mostly for uh, quantization. So you'll see that in the original firmware that a lot of the apps lean on different types of quantization, including a lot of cool stuff with chords. And then the Hemispheres firmware does have some quantization options, but there's also a lot more in there to check out. So between the two, you can kind of get just about you know, any job done, except for personal grooming. Okay, here are two ornament crimes. They're the same module, but they have different firmwares uploaded. This one on the left has the original firmware, and this one on the right has the Hemispheres firmware. Obviously, you can see there's a difference on the screen. That's because we have different apps going. But the primary difference between the original firmware and the Hemispheres firmware is in the Hemispheres firmware, it actually splits the module in half, so you can use two different apps at once. I have the uh, skewed LFO picked for uh, both sides just because it's pretty fun to look at. And then this is the Quadraturia mode uh, on the original. Again, something that's kind of fun to look at. But let's actually talk about what these are. Um, so if I take it off my screensaver here, on the left here are all the different parameters for this particular app. I can go into the the app selection mode here, and here are all the different apps on the original firmware. It's a little different on hemispheres. You don't have to get into a menu to switch between the apps. You actually just have to push the button below each screen, and now you can just go through all the different apps on this side. So you can see that you, uh, you know, obviously, like I said, you can use two different apps at once. So your one, two, uh, trig 1, 2, CV 1, 2, out A and B are going to correspond to this channel, and then 3, 4, 3, 4, and CD to this channel. Some of the um, apps here do stack, so that's kind of cool. Like some of the sequences and stuff, you can actually turn it into a, a module that works as one. The advantage of having the original firmware is you get four triggers, four CVs, and four outs. So they each have something to offer. I, I personally like to have both, but that's just me. I'm going to start with the original firmware, and I just want to warn you, going forward, we're going to use some uh, strange terms that are probably new to you. Uh, they're new to me, and a lot of them have to do with kind of obscure types of um, harmonies and chord quantization and stuff. So you will probably, like me, spend a lot of time on the Wikipedias looking up stuff like Tonets, which is German for tone network. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. Before we go any further, I also want to mention we do have a 1U version of Ornament and Crime, and this uh, can have either of the firmwares uploaded onto it. So first up, I'm going to go into my app selection menu here, and we'll just go in order. So the first thing is copy or machine. So basically what that is, is an enhanced version of the first original quantizing um, function that the ornament and crime is made for. And it is a digital emulation of a four stage analog shift register. Um, so look out for a video or go find a video on this and how it actually works. But that's, that's what it does. And these are all the different parameters. Like I said, this video is just going to be going through the options, not necessarily how to use them. So the Harrington, uh, the Harrington 1200, this provides basic Neo-Romanian tonance transformations. So <laughs> what does that mean? Um, in plain speak, you can do triad chords with this. Um, there you go. You can see in the screensaver, you have your triads there and you can turn, basically you can just use gates or triggers and this will create um, these triads based off of that. So that's pretty cool. So that's another kind of really, really cool theme about a lot of these uh, quantizing apps in the Ornament and Crime original firmware. A lot of them, you don't necessarily even need an external voltage source. You just need to trigger it, and this will create the quantized uh, voltage source. And as you can see, you can do inversions. You can change the inversions via CV. Like, this thing gets really, really crazy. And then we have our, you can do your root mode, minor or major. So I'll be honest, I've never used the automatonets, automatonets, um, but it combines the tonets transformations with a vector sequencer. So it can be both a chord sequencer and a melody sequencer, but uh, again, not of the usual kind. So when you open this up, you can see like, 
it's a lot of information, but let's look at this. Uh, let's look at the screensaver really quick. So here, very similar to the previous one, but we've got another side for the, uh, the vector sequencing, I think. Again, I don't know how to use all of these. That's a future video. So now we're getting to the quantum main, which I think is probably the main reason people end up getting an ornament in crime in the first place. Because it is a quad pitch quantizer, you can use external voltages with editable scales. It can do clocked or trigger driven quantizing or continuous quantizing. Um, it has a latency of under 100 microseconds, so that's pretty awesome. Um, it also features a quad Turing machine and some logic stuff, semi random stuff, internally generated CV. So there's all sorts of stuff here you can see. Um, so if we say uh, CV source, we can pick our CV source or we can actually use an, an internal one. So let's just turn it on to CV1 really quick. And, oh, that's for C, okay, here we go. So I know I'm not doing tutorials here, but because this is a really popular one, I just wanna show you how cool this is. Let's go into the screensaver. Now I'm just gonna plug a random stepped voltage into CV1. You can see it's going in there, but not much is happening. It's because of the way I have it set up. Now I'm just gonna put a pulse into the trigger and there you go that is a quantized sequence that is uh let's see it is in we have a root c it's a semitone scale but you can pick all sorts of different modes um and then there's a mask so you can turn on what kind like you can turn certain notes off um yeah and then all these different cv options so very very cool app so next up is the meta q which is very very similar to the quantum main um, except for it's a dual quantizer rather than uh, four. And I believe the reason for that is, is now we have um, more options for triggers and CV control for one quantizer. Because if we remember in quantum main, it's four. So we go to that, A through D, those are our outputs. So we basically just get one trigger, one CV for each one. Now you can double up your CV source. I could make CV source four work for all four of them but um, still you only get these inputs for each channel. Um, and then once again in the meta, you just got the two channels here. So I think it's just a little bit more, um, more control and you can act with more specificity. Now on to Quadraturia, which is uh, I think one of the more interesting apps in the original firmware. It is based off of an Easter egg mode in the mutable instruments frames module and it is what I started with on the, the beginning of the video, it is, uh, it's a quad quadrature LFO. So <laughs> what does that mean? I'm gonna go over it in a video. Um, this is gonna be one that I'm going to do a, an in-depth um, walkthrough on, but as you can see, massive amounts of functionality here to change um, between the different LFOs. Um, so yeah, this is a, a behemoth of a CV source and Another one of my favorite on the original is the uh, the low rents, and this one is um, this is is pretty in depth. It's basically um, well, it's it's a, a Lawrence and Rossler strange attractor modulation generator. So <laughs> that's that's kind of confusing, but I'm sure you've heard of the butterfly effect that has something to do with this. It's it's a lot of weird physics stuff. So I'm going to uh, do a, a tutorial on this one as well. But um, it is based off of another Easter egg mode from Immutable Instruments, but it's from the Streams module, um, and it's it is crazy. So you can't really see anything happening here. But once you start plugging in some CV, it makes some really, really wild, wacky stuff happen. So that's the graphic representation of the CV that's coming out. <laughs> Again, we'll talk about that in a future video. So the peaked is based off of uh, an envelope generator on the mutable instruments um, Peaks module, one of the uh, the uh, Easter egg modes in there, um, but this adds a bunch of uh, voltage control, additional envelope types, uh, re-triggering or looping. Um, you can do additional segment shapes, adjustable trigger delays. Um, there's a 
Euclidean trigger filter, which sounds really fun. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of stuff. If you want to kind of get a better idea right now of what this is, you could actually go to um, the video on our page about the different variations of the Dead Man's Catch firmware. And within there, you'll find something very similar to this. So you can get something like this out of um, any of our Peaks variations. Now on to the Sequins app, which is a dual channel step sequencer offering four tracks of up to 16 steps each. Um, and the tracks can themselves be sequenced. So you can see this will switch between the two step sequencers and you have all sorts of um, editing options here to um, you know, use these these four different quote unquote tracks that each can have 16 steps each. So you can switch between them via CV and it's, it's highly configurable. All right, so next up is the Dialectic Ping Pong, which is based off of yet another Mutable Instruments Peaks Easter Egg modes, the Bouncing Ball module, um, or excuse me, the, bou the Bouncing Ball envelope. So let's just plug a couple triggers in here. This is a quad Bouncing Ball envelope. And rather than explain to you what all these different things do, I've already explained it in that video I referenced earlier where I go through all of the different um, apps in the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware for the Peaks module. So up next is the Viz Nutcracker Suite, which is a byte beat uh, equation generator. And basically it just makes a bunch of crazy uh, eight bit type noises. Um, and you can, you know, have all these different types of uh, control over it. So you can actually make it musical, but it is, again, it's very eight bitty and can be very, very noisy. So uh, lots of fun in my opinion. All right, now on to what I think might be the coolest, I mean, just in my opinion, uh, app on the original firmware is Acid Curds. Now what Acid Curds is, is a chord progression generator. So how does that work? I am going to do an in-depth video on this, but I do want to just show you a little bit about this because it's really, really cool. Um, so up here can change through our modes. Um, this is, I'll, I'm just going to show you this section because again, I'll do a more in-depth video, but it's worth going into. So right here, we only have one chord. If I move this to that three dot, I add chords up to eight and each one, um, oops, has its, uh, parameters. So the type of the quality of the chord, uh, there's an inversion and all sorts of really cool stuff. So the different notes of the chord come out of each one of these outputs. So you can get a four note chord and you can do eight chords in a row, but wait, you can do four progressions. So you can do some pretty wild stuff with this chord mode. And finally, we have references, which most people won't end up using because this is kind of a utility app for people who are trying to calibrate their own modules. You can calibrate a VCO with it. Um, there's also a, uh, a tuner, a frequency meter. There is uh, a tempo meter. There's all sorts of uh, cool stuff. But like I said, unless you are in the business of, uh, you know, tuning up your own modules or calibrating stuff, you probably won't need it. All right, so that's the basic firmware. Let's move on to Hemispheres. Okay, so Hemispheres is maybe for the person who wants all the cool functionality that Ornament and Crime has to offer, but doesn't like to uh, you know, do what we call menu diving, even though I think it's worth the diving in this case for a lot of that stuff. This is a way more streamlined setup here. So here we have an ADSR envelope generator, real simple. Let's just trigger that. Boom. That's the shape of the envelope there. So you can click through and change your attack, decay, sustain, and release. And there you go. A nice, easy envelope generator. The double press of the up button will just give you kind of a map. There's nothing to do here. Uh, this is just a, a map of the controls. So that's kind of useful if you're if you're not sure what to, you know, what what's doing what? What's doing the, okay, the gate, oh, gate is channel one, oh, and channel two. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I think you can re-trigger it then. Um, so yeah, that's a, a, a cool little function. And then just a single press of this, and now we are in app selection mode. So because we're on the left side, we'll use the left encoder, A, D, E, G. So again, this is just an attack decay 
So the same thing as last time, oops, wrong module, but it's just an attack and decay. So there's no sustain and release control. Okay, so this one is really, really crazy. This is an annular fusion Euclidean drummer. So you see all these dots in here? Those are gonna be um, basically, they represent any sort of out from the A or B channel. Uh, so you have two channels here. So I can now I can trigger this. So you can see basically those lines moving around are showing you what is, um, you know, when things are gonna hit and come out of this, this output. Uh, watch when I put a little CV into the CV in, it actually starts rotating the, uh, the different, the, the rings inside. So you're going to be going around the ring, but you're also um, moving the ring around with this. So some really, really crazy um, gate sequencing with this. So next up is the ASR but it's not an ASR as an attack sustain release. This is um, actually uh, an analog, quote unquote, because this is a digital module, um, but it's an analog shift register simulation with 256 step ring buffer. Um, and when selected in one hemisphere, it has two indexed outputs, but as we know, we can have two going on here. If you select it here as well, oops you can actually um, use it on all four of these outs. So as I mentioned earlier, there are modes where you can stack two of the same apps in hemispheres to create one module. This is one of them. Okay, now we have the atten off, which is uh, attenuator and offset. So super, super useful uh, utility module. If you're new to modular, you may not uh, appreciate the beauty of these, but I promise you'll hit a moment where you, be, where you will say, wow, yes, utilities are the best. Um, so basically you have an A and B out, so you, um, you can attenuate and offset uh, one voltage. The one thing that's kind of misleading is it's called the atten off. So you would think that the first parameter would be attenuation. But if you know what attenuation is, you know that you can't uh, go into the positive. Basically, you get 100% of the incoming signal and down. So this right here is actually the offset. So you can do negative or positive offset of the voltage. And then here is our attenuation. And then that is the same for the B channel. Next up is binary counter. Uh, binary counter is weird. And that is not me speaking. That is straight from the, uh, the uh, online manual here. It takes four logic inputs, high or low, and provides a binary summed output and a count output. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I can fully explain that. So uh, I wish you the best if you want to use it. So next up is the Boots and Cat. And this is the first app that we have discussed in this video that actually puts out some audio. I mean, maybe you could get some of the uh, modulation stuff into audio range, but this is uh, basically just a, a bass and snare um, drum machine. So you just send it some triggers, you got some, uh, some audio outs for a bass and snare. So that's pretty fun. Okay, next up is the Brancher, which I think is a really fun, um, app, especially if you're into, um, you know, doing semi-random stuff or generative stuff. This basically is, um, it's based off of the mutable branches. It, uh, you send it an incoming gate or trigger, and then based off of this probability, it's 50% chance that it comes out of A. Um, so we can, you know, mess with our, our percentages. And then basically one in comes out of one of these two outputs, depending on um, the percentage that you set up. So that's kind of a cool way that you can uh, add some some weird semi-random and put some probability into it to where you can actually have the machine do some of the thinking for you. All right, let's talk about Burst. It's a pretty interesting app. Um, that's a lot of bursts. <laughs> Basically what it does is you, you send it some sort of uh, clock or trigger gate signal, and then out of the A output, it's going to send uh, a burst of triggers. How many bursts? Well, seven, up to 12, or just one. So you can select those. And then this is the length of uh, the, the trigger bursts. What's cool about this is the B output is actually a gate that's related 
to the triggers. So this gate stays high until the last trigger is fired. So for those of you who are confused about the difference between trigger and gates, this app is a really, really good way to wrap your head around uh, those two different concepts. Calculate is a pretty cool utility, multi-utility app. Um, and it's, it's probably better understood by the, uh, the more mathematically minded, which I am not. Um, it basically just applies arithmetic to uh, some different operands or uh, CV sources. So you can, um, you get your min, your max, sum, and difference. So just really quick, the difference thing actually will give you the absolute value of the difference between two different sources. And there's all sorts of different uh, applications in here. There's a sample and hold, which is always nice to have a sample and hold. There's a random. Um, yeah. So again, just some more utilities. Uh, and you, you should, if, if you're confused by this app, I highly recommend just playing with it and seeing what happens. Because when you wrap your head around some of these more seemingly obscure uh, things that modular synth synthesizers can do, uh, it'll just make you a better synthesis. The Carpeggiator is a really, really cool app. It is a Cartesian arpeggiator, meaning it uses this four by four Cartesian grid. Um, so really quick here, you can pick what, um, what chord you want to arpeggiate, and then you can pick the type of chord it is, all sorts of different cool stuff, major inverted. Um, and then Basically, what you have here are a bunch of different controls for how to make this thing move. Um, so the uh, trigger in one plays the CV at the current position and advances it to the next step, X then Y. Um, and then the, the trigger two actually resets it, so it'll send it back to the first, the upper leftmost uh, square in the grid. CV1 is the X position on the plane and CV2 is the Y position. Now here's where it gets really cool is um, output A is a quantized pitch. So that is your actual arpeggio. But output two is uh, a modulation output uh, proportional to the XY. So you can actually, this is something that would be fun to maybe send into your FM input while you send that into your one volt per octave. So you're, you're, you're getting double duty out of this um, this this arpeggio that you've you've selected um it's kind of i think of it as a very very simplified miniature version of something like the rene from make noise which is a cartesian sequencer and once again an excellent utility module every i think every system needs a clock divider slash multiplier and that's exactly what this is so you have two channels so you can send it a clock you can divide by one so basically nothing divide by two all the way up to eight. Oh, yep, eight. And then you can actually multiply up to eight. Um, and then you have two of those. So you can have one that's divided by four and one that's multiplied by four. Um, having just re uh, different divisions and multiplications of your main clock for the patch is absolutely essential in my book. In the realm of uh, clock division, here we have some clock um, skipping. Basically, it's a it's a dual probability skipper. So you send in your clock to one and two, and then you can set your um, your probability here. So at a hundred percent, if I'm sending a trigger into here, the trigger's coming out of here. And as I turn down the percentage, it just you know now there's a ninety one percent chance that every time this is high, this will send something out. Um, what's pretty cool is with the CV ends, you can use uh, bipolar uh, modulation sources to increase and decrease. So if you have something that's bipolar, uh, as it's going negative, it'll decrease your probability and then positive will increase. So you can kind of go back and forth. Um, again, this is a, a fun way to introduce some semi-random or something that's very cool for something that might sound generative, you know, a very, very slow uh, bipolar signal changing this time uh, maybe you're you're triggering um a, a really long envelope for a big big uh you know brassy chord or something well that's only going to happen when this tells it to and if this is constantly changing then you've uh you know you've got a kind of unpredictable yet in time releasing of said brassy chord or whatever you want it to be 
on to another very useful utility, especially if you want to get into the generative space of patching, the semi-random. This is the Compare app, which is a comparator. Um, if you're not familiar with what a comparator is, it actually compares two voltages and then spits out um, a gate, depending on the level of those voltages. So I'm just going to plug in this uh, this envelope generator here. Um, before I plug any CV into this, I want to just show you that this uh, is our modifiable voltage range. So I can turn it all the way up. I believe it probably goes to 5 or 10 volts. And then I can turn it all the way down and then anywhere in between. So this is the voltage that we are going to be used to compare to an external voltage source. So I'm just going to send in a looping uh, AS envelope from our carve module into CB1. And now notice that we've got these envelopes being triggered at different times and sometimes at the same time. Um, so basically what's happening there is the A gate is high if CV1 is greater than the uh, modified level. So I can turn that up and that will change these gate relationships because CVB or output B is high if the modified level is equal to or greater than CV1. Uh, and then the final piece of this puzzle that I think is pretty cool is if you put a bipolar voltage source into CV2, you can actually increase and de decrease that modifier level. So now I've got just another looping um, AS envelope, but it's actually not an AS envelope. It's a bipolar uh, triangle LFO from CARVE. So that's increasing and decreasing the onboard modulations value. And now that's changing the relationship of these two gates. The CV recorder um, does exactly what it says. It records up to um, 384 steps of CV um, and it's a two track recorder. So that's pretty interesting. Um, you can also add slew to the steps that you record into it and there are adjustable start and end points. So um, yeah, sky's the limit as far as I'm concerned with this one. Okay, here's another fun one. The Dr. Crusher uh, does probably what you're thinking it does. It is a single channel sample rate and bit resolution reducer for not just audio signals, but also CV. So you can mangle your, uh, your CV signals and probably get some pretty wild outcomes from that. This here is the dual quantizer. This is uh, probably my most used app on the uh, Hemisphere suite. Um, basically, you can send it to different voltages and quantize them completely separately, or um, you can have them be the same. So if you're you know, I don't know why you'd want them to be separate, maybe for uh, different pieces of a performance or something. But here you can just go through and select your uh, mode and then your root note and then do that on this side. And there you have it. All right. The Enigma Junior, this might be one of the more complicated um, and interesting apps in the hemispheres or actually across all of the ornament and crime apps. Um, basically, it's a... Um, it's a workstation uh, for Turing machine or shift register based um, voltage sequences. So here uh, we can go through, let's see here. All of these are different se uh, sequences basically that we can go through all the way up through E8. So A1 through E8. Um, you can do some probability controls and then you can actually, this is one of the few apps in hemispheres where you can assign your output. So the A, B are the different outputs. Um, so you can have them do different things. Um, for some pretty, like just do some research on Alan Turing and uh, cracking the Enigma, um, winning World War I and all that stuff. It's, it's really fascinating history. And uh, so that's why these things are named Turing Machine and Enigma and why we have Morecambe as one of the expanders for our Allen, uh, which is our miniature Turing Machine. Um, a lot of really cool history there. But yeah, this is a pretty in-depth app. And it basically, it's a way for people to maybe use these, uh, build these libraries of um, sequences that are created by random um, and then a way to uh, string those together. So pretty, pretty fun app. 
envelope follower um, is exactly what it sounds like. It's an envelope follower, but also has uh, ducking capabilities. Um, so you can choose, it's a two channel, so you can have two follows or two ducks. And um, because envelope followers are usually used with audio signals, um, and audio signals are much lower than um, then your typical CV range, a gain of up to 31x is provided. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you just use one input and the two outputs are generated off of uh, that input. And now we have a gate delay. It's actually a dual gate delay. So basically you uh, can choose your millisecond value. So you send in a trigger uh, and then it will send a gate delayed by the amount of milliseconds that you choose. And then you can use uh, bipolar CV to bring that value up and down. So that's a nice useful app. Next up is the gated VCA, which is a VCA for CV with the ability to uh, gate the first output. Uh, it can sort of be used for audio, but works best as an extra CV VCA. And then the lo-fi tape, this one's pretty fun. Uh, this is an audio rate looper for audio and CV. So you can, uh, yeah, you can do just that. You can loop audio or CV. So it's a way of recording something and creating loops. I think recording CV is a lot of fun. It's a good way to stretch the, uh, the amount of control voltage that you can get out of a smaller setup as well. And then a logic. Logic's pretty simple. Um, this is a two input logic module that performs two logical operations at once. So um, the available gate types are AND, OR, XOR, N AND, NOR, and X NOR. Um, if you're not familiar with logic, then this isn't the video for you. <laughs> it's, it's pretty in depth and you can find a lot of information about that elsewhere. So here we have the lower Lorenz. Um, so this is a Lorenz only modulation generator that's based on the, um, the original OC's uh, low Lorenz dual Lorenz and Rosler generator, uh, which itself based on an Easter egg from mutable instrument streams. But basically this is just um, a really, really fun, crazy modulation uh, source that you can um, actually use other modulation sources to create really crazy modulation based off of it. Um, so here we go. So those are just two different um, cycling uh, triangle LFOs. One is bipolar and we're basically just changing the relationship here. So you can see there are some of our parameters, but I don't want to get too in the weeds with this because this is just a, a quick roundup of all the different stuff. So now we have the um, mixer balance, which is a pretty cool little uh, app. We can just put in two different CV sources and um, now they're both going to be mixed out of the, uh, the A and B outputs. And then the, uh, the mix is controlled by the encoder here. So just a good way to uh, blend a couple CV sources together. So this is the palimpsest accent sequencer, which uh, basically just composes a pattern by way of a repeated sequence of trigger impressions. Here we have the Rungle book, which is actually based off of the Rungler uh, from Rob Hordyke's Benjolin. So that's pretty cool. You can get a little uh, Benjolin action within the hemispheres uh, mode. Scale Duet is a pretty fun little quantizer here. Um, it's a single channel quantizer that allows you to switch between two user defined scales. So you'll see it says scale one here and we have our keyboard. So you can go through this keyboard and turn notes on or off. And then if you go all the way to the right, it'll bring you into scale two. So that's pretty simple, but useful. This is the Schmidt trigger app that uh, is a type of comparator that provides a hysteresis in a modular patch. Each Schmidt triggers output goes high when its input crosses the high threshold um, and stays high until the input goes back below. This one's really useful. It's just a, a mini oscilloscope. So if you want to see what kind of, uh, what is, what is your, uh, what does your waveform look like? Sequence five is pretty self-explanatory. It is a five step sequencer. So you can put your values set with these levels here and then, yeah, send it a trigger to 
go on through the sequencer. Or what's cool is if you turn on the internal metronome, you can actually get it to uh, be clocked internally. So that's pretty cool. So here, the shift register, um, that is actually just a, a Turing machine app. It's based off the Tom Whitwell Turing machine. Um, and then we have the shift gate, and this is a dual shift register based uh, gate trigger sequence sequencer for creating uh, aleatoric rhythm patterns. So kind of like the um, the Turing machine, but it's, it's, uh, it's two gates instead of just CV outputs. Okay, shuffle. Shuffle is a two-step clock offset. Each step can be delayed um, by between zero and 99% of the incoming clock tempo. So that would be a cool thing to put into uh, maybe your, your gate sequencer's clock input. So this is a pretty fun one. This is the skewed LFO. So you can actually adjust the speed here with one parameter, and then you can do ramp, triangle, and sawtooth. Um, but like many of the Hemisphere apps, if you put some um, bipolar voltage into this, both the CV controls, you can get some pretty wild um, stuff happening. So you can basically, you can control um, the rate and the skew with bipolar signals. So here is a very, very simple um, slew. You can can add some slew to any sort of incoming signal and then a uh, the a output is a linear output and B output is an exponential output so that's a very very simple but useful module um, squanch uh, squanch is a shifting quantizer uh, it's a pitch shifting quantizer with a single input and two pitch shifted outputs um, so it can also be used as a voltage adder so that's pretty sweet as well. Um, here's a switch. It's a two-channel switch with uh, two switching methods, se uh, sequential or gated. So again, another very simple utility. This is the Threshold Logic Neuron. It is a three-input programmable logic gate. Um, so this is called the dendrite, which is what um, neurons in your brain are called. And it actually means little tree in a uh, Latin for anybody who wants to know. So yeah, you can go in and program all these different nodes here. Let's just put a clock really quick into the Turing machine and put some trigs in here. So now I'm triggering these two, right? But I can also use CV to go around and see what's being triggered. So just another way to use logic and um, maybe a little bit more of a uh, controlled way. Trending is a dual slope detector with assignable outputs. Um, CV1 and 2 are the incoming signals, and then outputs uh, A and B are assignable and are, uh, co correspond to the CV1 and CV2 channels. Um, so you can change the different functions and then the sensitivity. So lots of cool ways to deal with um, voltage here in the hemispheres mode. Okay, so this here is the trig sequencer and it's basically two different eight step trigger sequencers. So there you can see this little um, blinking line. That means I'm on the first four. Now I'm on the, uh, the second four and you can't go in and actually pick what ones, uh, what nodes you're gonna send a trigger out on. You can just scroll through all the different combination options until you find what you want. And then um, that's the end of the A output trigger sequencer. And now I can go in and write the B. So it's just two eight step trigger sequencers. Pretty cool. If I have the metronome um, on internal, I can go and hold this down. And now you'll see that's blinking. And I don't need an external trigger to get it going. Now, similarly, here we have the trigger 16, which is the exact same thing as what we just looked at with the trigger sequencer, except it's not two, it's one, uh, it's one 16 step trigger sequencer. So here, this is a very useful app in the hemispheres mode, but you'll have to use it on the right side for some reason. Uh, you can't use the tuner app on the left. I don't know why that is, but yeah, just a simple tuner. So you can, uh, you can get your oscillators in tune. 
So here we have a vector envelope generator. Uh, it's a dual envelope generator based on uh, vector oscillator waveforms. So there's a variety of built-in waveforms for you to choose from, and you can create your own with a waveform editor. But look at all these really fun waveforms to get, you get to choose from. So that's cool. Um, yeah, lots of different waveforms. And then you can also, uh, let's see, you can set so this is B, you can see that's B and A, so that's why it's dual, so you can you have to scroll through to see um, what waveform you're on in its frequency and shape. Then there's a vector LFO, so very, very similar. Change your, um, your wave shape, and it's a dual LFO, just like the uh, the envelope generator is a dual envelope generator. The vector mod is a dual triggered one shot or cycling modulation source, also based off of uh, vector uh, oscillator waveforms. There's a variety of built in waveforms, so just like all the other ones that we were just covering. However, what this one does is you can, um, you can actually trigger the waveform, but then you can modulate the modulator. Okay, and then finally we have voltage. Um, basically what this is, is a dual gate activated fixed voltage emitter. So you can see I have two different uh, fixed voltages for my A and B output. The highest you can go is positive five volts and the lowest you can go is negative three. You can see it says G off, that basically just means gate off. So if I turn gate on, oops. Now I need to send a gate into the trigger to get um, that five volts emitted here. Um, so it's useful for calibration, but also if you wanted just a, a steady fixed voltage, um, just when you hit your, uh, on a certain gate hit, well, you got it here. I personally have never used anything like that, but now I'm thinking of use case scenarios where I would. Anyways. All right, well, thank you for sticking with me through that video. I know I went into some apps in more detail than others. Um, I just kind of felt like some of them were worth explaining a little bit more for people who are new to modular synthesis. Um, again, none of this was meant to be a full fleshed out demo of any of these apps uh, that will be coming in the future. Um, actually, if there are any apps that you would like me to demo, why don't you leave uh, a message in the comments there? Say, hey, I would really like to see an in-depth um, of whatever uh, and maybe I can get around to that but I hope this was helpful and uh, thanks for watching